Well, like I said, I had to go back to camp. I, well, I bumbled back. I picked up a stick along the way, and then I thought to myself, I stood under the biggest knob thorn tree you've ever seen that shades our car park, where we park our private cars, not where we park Wendy, Rusty, and Jigger. And then I thought, stood under there and thought, if I throw this stick, it's either it's A, it's going to land on my car's windscreen. <laughs> Insurance wouldn't like that. B, it's going to hit Craig's motorbike and then it's going to fall over to the ground. Or it was going to go through Byron's car and the rest of the vehicles. And I thought to myself, oh, this is going to be a disaster. But anyways, I managed to do it with three attempts of throwing the stick up into the tree to get some pods and a flower to fall down and without breaking any cars too. So here we go. How great is this? A little collection. And like Byron says, it's one of his favorite flowers. Don't you think? It's a beautiful looking flower and it just smells. Oh, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't I don't even know how to describe the scent to you. It's not quite the smell of jasmine, but it it definitely has a slight hint of jasmine. It's very sweet. Not roses. <laughs> There's another smell in here. I don't know how to describe it, but it's it is very, very nice. And well, you know, you're just gonna have to come and visit us here in South Africa or in other parts of Africa because you get knob thorn trees all over, but it's not just that. But then we've got the pods too. Look at all these pods. Now I'll talk about the pods very quickly. So these pods start developing and normally they're a reddish color and they're quite pliable once they first start. Uh, and then what happens is they start to dry and eventually they drop off. And when they hit the ground, they're still solid. And eventually they sort of twist and break and they open up. Like you can see this one is starting to over here. You see the little gaps and I can pull it. Oh, I'm just breaking that one. I can pull it apart quite easily. It looks like this. Oh, we might be able to put this under the microscope. We're going to investigate with that one. I'm going to save that one. And here are the little beans. See that tiny little thing there? That's the only one that's left in this one. And they're quite cool. And then they will hopefully germinate in the ground. Now, should we have a look at the microscope so we can have a closer look at the flower? I think so. I think that would be a great idea. It is very pretty. Look at that. Isn't that just unbelievable? Now, I know it's been quite some time since we've been able to have a look at uh, the knobthorn flowers. They're beautiful. The stem is bright red with, of course, the, the white little flowers and the yellow tips to them. A very, very pretty flower out in the bush. And as I was describing, one of the most beautiful scents that we have out here. You smell it all over, especially when uh, you drive a... Very, very pretty flower out in the bush, and as I was describing, one of the most beautiful scents that we have out here. You smell it all over, especially when uh, you drive a... Acacia describes the thorns that they have, and Senegalis does not, but it's very, very pretty. So giraffe are also responsible for pollinating these flowers, seeing as though they're eating them so much, they're constantly uh, sort of diving in face first, and all that pollen gets stuck to their, to their, well, all the hairs on their body, and then when they go to the next acacia, they're pollinating it that way. Don't you think that's amazing? Now, I'm going to change things quickly. I'm also... Okay, can we come back to me very quickly? Because I want to try and take this overlay off. I don't know how, but I need to press buttons. I'm going to press lots of buttons. 